recognize it as, as far as the type of language. But the most important thing is to go over the actual physical points that I recognized as far as being where um, uh, that Jerusalem was actually Edinburgh. And so looking at the maps, both of you, and then uh, the audience will be able to see it very soon when you get it posted, is that southern Scotland is the real location for the region known as Mesopotamia, that this is where the real locations for the ancient kingdoms of Canaan, Assyria, Israel, Babylon, and Ur, you are, uh, are located, and that all the borders and boundaries of southern Scotland. This is where the true Bible locations for these ancient kingdoms are located at. Uh, here is the map of the 12 tribes of Israel, all inside the borders and boundaries of Scotland. Judea, uh, this map shows here, the section and division all laid out in different regions of Scotland. And the Hyperborean Hebrews, or known as the Atlantean Israelite tribes, are Reuben, Simon, uh, Levi, Jude, Judah, Dan, Naphtali, uh, Gad, Asher, Gad, G-A-D, Asher, uh, Ishtar, I-S-S-A-C-H-A-R, uh, Zebulun, Z-E-B-U-L-U-N, Joseph, and Benjamin. And they're all laid out in the Scottish landscapes with the mountains of Scotland and the valleys of Scotland as well. All of these 12 tribes uh, of Israel were all located in Scotland, right inside the Scottish territories, the mountains and valleys themselves, uh, where they speak of the, the 12 tribes of Reuben, Simon, Levi, Judah, uh, Dan, Naphtali, uh, Gad, Asher, uh, Ishar, and Zebulun, Joseph, and Benjamin. I've been trying to tell people that the real city of Jerusalem and the Hebrew Israelite kingdom was and is located truly in Scotland originally and still is. Edinburgh, Scotland is the real prehistoric ancient biblical city of Jerusalem. The entire story of the Bible does not originate from the Middle East. It originates from the ancient prehistoric Scotland. Even the true Israelites, Scottish Millicents, which are M-I-L-E-S-I-A-N-S, -E are not from the Middle East. They are all part of the Western tribes of Aryans who splintered off in their own groups and tribes, but they also originate from the kingdom of Thule, which was Atlantis, which I knew. Both King David and his son, King Solomon, were red-haired. Red hair is mentioned that is a description of David and his family that they were all fair haired and fair skinned. That was even uh, most of the description of the rest of the ancient Hebrew and Israelites themselves. The city that is so-called the Middle East is not the real city of Jerusalem. That city is not the real holy city and nor the uh, sacred city of ancient biblical Israel. It is Jerusalem was in Scotland. The city is not the true and holy name uh, and sacred city of the Hebrew scriptures. This is none other than the fake fabricated uh, city of uh, created by Rome and the Roman Empire itself as an embodiment of lies and deceits over the entire eyes of the entire world. Looking at the pictures, uh, uh, Jeff and Jesse, you can see he's uh, showing where uh, Judah and all the uh, Moab uh, where Mesopotamia was, uh, you can see, uh, the, uh, sea of, the original Sea of Galilee, uh, Canaan, and it goes on. And, and I will be putting uh, this map up on Telegram right after the show, so everyone can see what you're re referencing. Okay, and please put up all the maps so they can see this. I'm gonna get to that in a moment of, as far as the actual photographs from aerial photographs, which show precisely how it actually correlates exactly to what it should be. Uh, that, and Edinburgh is comprised of two names. Edin is the ancient name, E-D-I-N, one of them, for Eden, E-D-E-N. Okay, and then you also have what is the second half, the second word is Berg, B-O-R-G, that's Germanic, and it mean, translates into uh, city or town. So what you have is the city of Eden. And the answer has been in plain sight, hiding among all the documents, but open to the public. Okay. Going forward. Uh, Edinburgh, Scotland is a relocation of the holy and sacred biblical city of Jerusalem. Does that city, 
is in the Middle East, was not part of the ancient Hebrew uh, slash Israelite kingdom of Israel. It is a, a known secret fact, a suppressed fact, that the ancient biblical Edinburgh, Scotland, is where the true lands of the Bible is located, as southern Scotland is where the real ancient biblical, i.e. ancient Hebrew Israelite kingdom of Israel, was situated at. The city in the Middle East is not Jerusalem. It is all fake, a Roman fabrication of and a total copy of Edinburgh, Scotland, where the real holy and sacred city of Jerusalem is actually located at. Scotland, Ireland, and England are the ancient biblical history of the British Isles where the true story of the Bible took place. Scotland is the land of Canaan, Israel, and Mesopotamia. It is the real, real location of the true kingdom of Israel. Edinburgh is uh, the real city, which I mentioned, and where the land of Canaan is located. Uh, the author is good. His research is excellent, but he is a little uh, uh, redundant as far as uh, repetition. Okay. Uh, then he planned on taking a trip, uh, Brandon Michael Keyes in Scotland to 2017, and it will prove that Arthur's seat, what we know as King Arthur, is a Mount of Olives and Edinburgh Castle and its moat is the real Temple Mount of the Holy Rood, and that's Holy Rood, H-O-L-Y-R-O-D, palace, is where the house and the palace of King Solomon once stood. Uh, he is a firm believer that of the earthen mounds that are dotted around Ireland and Scotland happen to be real tombs of biblical patriarchs and biblical uh, matriarchs of the, in the Bible. That is correct. They're doing research now, um, uh, public that uh, excavations are taking place in both Ireland, Scotland, well, all three, Ireland, Scotland, and four, Wales, and uh, mainland uh, Britain, and they are discovering that those earthen mounds, which we believed were just natural formations, they're actually burial pyramids or burial sites. And the reason being so large is that they were holy sites and they were uh, respected and honored. So, Going forward, um, I, I did get an update, and I won't have enough time today to do that update, but we will cover that in the next episode. Um, uh, what he also mentioned is that uh, the ancient prophets of Israel, uh, to the all the ancient kings of Israel, they are entombed in those great burial mounds in and around Ireland and Scotland, which I just mentioned. Uh, the stone has recently been returned back to Scotland. Okay, that is known as a stone of destiny. And uh, Scotland is currently without a ruling king and or monarch right now. That stone itself is still waiting for the next to be crowned upon it. Okay, um, after the deluge, um, the ruling tribes of the Aryans returned. These people were historically known as the people of the cat, and the lion is rampant their, uh, being their symbol. The popular flag of Caledonia, Scotland and also of the king of Norway, also ancient, anciently countries, and part of the Atlantean Thule um, race. Edinburgh having a, a very sphinx-like hill, later it was called Arthur's Seat, which looks just like a lion crouched, and was also known as the City of the Lion, uh, which is the patron saint of Edinburgh, is David. It is pointed out that these authors... Uh, that the biblical references to Jerusalem refer to a fertile land full of mines, minerals, crops with a seaport called Jaffa, J-O-P-P-A, that exactly fits the location of Edinburgh, not the Jerusalem in Palestine, which is, has a very distant port called Jaffa, which is J-F-F-A, rather than Jopa, J-O-P-P-A. That is a, that is over time, that is a, uh, replicate, it was replicated, but it's not spelled the same. And this is only to cover this false history of that Jerusalem and the Israelite peoples originated in the Middle East. That is all BS. Okay. Uh, let me see. Oh, the, that um, this portrayal exactly fits the location of Edinburgh, not uh, the Jerusalem in Palestine, which is a very different port, as mentioned. And given the history that history always favors a victor, not the defeated, then something sure must have gone wrong to make us think that all things we know today about Jerusalem itself. 
but the records show that Rome built a boundary chain around Jerusalem 80 miles. Indeed, there exists a chain of forts called the Catril, which is C-A-T-R-A-I-L, that is almost exactly 80 miles. The people of the Cat, or the Gande, which is G-A-D-E-N-I, or the Gad, which is G-A-D, were the ruling tribes of Jews. And the entire fertile area of Edinburgh and the Lothians, L-O-T-H-I-N-S, was populated by some one million people then. A place was biblically recorded to be a hub of civilization. Today, all the Roman signports have been defaced and deleted for some terrible, something terribly happened in Edinburgh. I know of one thing, uh, Jeff, is that, uh, I haven't covered this before, uh, that is called, um, King Arthur's Comet. In 560, 550 to 560 AD, a gigantic comet came in and it went right across from north to south, from, uh, northeast to south, uh, west, northeast to southwest across, uh, Great Britain, Scotland, Great Britain, and Ireland. And it literally devastated the entire, it was so intense, it devastated. I have a, an essay on this with photographs and you'll be able to see exactly what it did. And at that point, there was, uh, uh, the ones that did survive, it probably took out 80, 85% of the populations. And the ones that did survive, they emigrated to, uh, the, uh, mainland Europe and some went, uh, to North America. I'll get into that at a later date. Okay. So that is a fact. It did exist. And, um, a place that was, uh, biblically recorded to be the hub of civilization. Uh, uh, this was during a time of a serious instability in the Roman Empire. And the, basically the Jews of the tribe of Gad, which were uh, the Silurians, which is S-I-L-U-R-I-N-S, revolted and the retribution from Rome was terrible. There was a massacre of some eighty to 100,000 people by the Roman legions and the emperor ordered that not a stone remain standing and that uh, salt be placed upon the earth. When you get these pictures posted, uh, Jeff, uh, you will see from the uh, actual photographs, you'll see Arthur's seat is the real Mount of Olives and Edinburgh, Scotland is the true city of Jerusalem, whereas Edinburgh Castle is the real Temple Mount itself. And then you on the other photograph, the public will see that Arthur's seat is the real Mount of Olives and the royal palace of the Kingdom of Solomon below it. That um, the Edinburgh Castle is the real Temple Mount itself. So... Uh, that covers, uh, the, most of the pictures except for the last one, which is an aerial view from, uh, I believe it's a helicopter, uh, where it shows King Solomon's house of the, f- and, uh, of the forest of the cedars, which is known as Hollywood Palace, and that's H-O-L-R, H-O-L-Y-R-O-O-D, Palace. Uh, and then it's basically showing where Lebanon existed. But when we get into part two, they're gonna see that all of the surrounding ancient cultures slash civilizations existed between the Irish and the Scottish and the British Isles itself. Every one of them. Okay. Going on, you have, uh, is that, which I've read and I have some of, I have three quarters of, uh, uh, one of his books, Commons Beaumont, book detailed that the map of Edinburgh slash Jerusalem as it was then, the citadel being Edinburgh Castle on the impregnable rock of three uh, precipitous sides more aptly conforms to biblical descriptions than our current understanding of the citadel in Jerusalem today in Palestine. The Dung Castle, D-U-N-G, a uh, Dung Gate rather, corresponds with the Cow Gate of, in Edinburgh. The Temple Mound on the way to God, Edinburgh's Royal Mile, which we'll get into a later date. It's very complicated. It's, it's mathematically technical. At the Temple Mound, there stands St. Giles Cathedral and a commemorative heart in the cobbles outside, which signify the heart of the Lothians, and that's L-O-T-H-I-N-S. Opposite St. Giles on the Temple Mount, the Law Courts. One of the oldest Masonic lodges also stands near the Royal Mile, whilst the Mount of Olives was Arthur's seat. Golgotha, which is G-O-L-G-O-T-H-A, was Gogar, G-O-G-A-R, and the Holyrood Palace was a palace of cedars. And Jopa, J-O-P-P-A, 
has always been a port in Edinburgh. The broad estuary upon the Edinburgh stands, the city of Lyon, of the Gad, of the sovereign tribes of the Jews. It is called the Firth of Forth, and that's F-I-R-T-H, and then O-F, and then F-O-R-T-H. Translates as the Way of Ways. And this crossing of a broad estuary at Jerusalem is noted in the Bible, with Pontius Pilate stating just north, or staying rather, just north of the Roman fort chain, which fenced the area in like some ancient ghetto comprised of one of the richest and most powerful hubs of civilization in the ancient world, with its lead, silver mines, fertile lands, and rich people. Scottish Jerusalem was a powerful place. It is recorded that King David, on the run from Solomon, consulted a seer of Gad. Edinburgh has many names. Uh, and it, I'll spell them because most people would not, not be familiar. K-A-E-R, Care, Eden, which you know, E-D-N, Dun, D-U-N, Gad, G-A-D, <coughs> and the other one is I'm not familiar with, which is G-I-U-D-I hyphen A-I-L hyphen G-U-A-R-T-H, which would be, uh, Goody Isle Garth, or Gwerth. Of the Jews of Gad, uh, Chonia, which is C-H-A-O-N-I-A, and the place of, which translates into the place of chaos. In 13, uh, in 134 AD, the Jews claimed a new Messiah, which was Bar, B-A-R, Kochaba, C-O-C-H-E-B-A, son of the star, and the chief rabbi anointed him king of the Jews. A coin was minted showing him with a crown, and on the reverse side was a thistle, the symbol of Scotland. And that goes on about the coin. So basically, uh, the second half of the temple, but not the revision, was showing the pictures that... Uh, where Moses went up and received the laws from, which uh, uh, I never took Hebrew or ancient uh, languages, but it's E-H-Y-E-H, Asher, which I can pronounce, and E-H-Y-E-H, which would be Oya, Asher, Oya, the mountains of Yah Oya, and that is in northern Scotland, uh, rather in Scotland Central. And then the picture will also show uh, the Mount Shibiot Hills, which was the Sinai. Uh, beyond the boundary forts near the palace, uh, the, rather the Pilate family, P-I-L-A-T-E, resides that place which is known as Epidamus, which is E-P-I-D-A-M-N-U-S, which translates into beyond the damned. The tribe of Ilnya, which is I-L-L-Y-N-A, uh, the Silurians, S-I-L-U-R-I-A-N-S, were brutally assaulted by the Romans in the ancient acts of genocide. And I mentioned about the genocide earlier. And the city of Edinburgh today remembers those ancient constructions by its very old uh, underground workings, not the brickwork of the latter city fathers. Today, Edinburgh is still known for its seven hills, the ancient lineage of the Aryans and giants. The Earl of Orcus, which is O-R-C-U-S, or Orkney today, descendant of Thule and Atlantis, which is keeper of the bloodline and is what is known as Roslyn Chapel. It may have been that the Templars brought vast treasure here to rebuild the Temple of Jerusalem and the city of Gad. And it may also be that the prophecy of Branan Seer, which is B-R-A-H-A-N, uh, S-E-E-R, as Rome was, comma, London is, and Edinburgh shall be, uh, is part of the future destiny of mankind. In popular press, the Roslyn Chapel is a repository of all the world's ancient artifacts. It held the Spear of Destiny, the Cup of Destiny, uh, the Holy Grail, Excalibur, ancient scrolls, and vast treasure. That treasure I've already traced went over to North America. But in reality, the truth is far stranger than fiction. My recent activities, this is him, in Edinburgh, Scotland, has brought me a lot of attention. However, the MI5 department, MI5 in Great Britain, translates into our United States FBI, whereas MI6 in Great Britain translates into the CIA, one being domestic and one being uh, global. Uh, department of Parapsychology, special branch, all seems to be keeping tabs on me and my group as we continue to remit this information about shape-shifting reptoids and the true historic and global significance of Edinburgh, Scotland. The Draco bloodlines and the MI5 all seem to uh, go together 
Edinburgh was a holy city at the time of Atlantis. And the remains uh, have been carefully enshrined in Masonic uh, secrets and buildings in and around Edinburgh. It is most likely that the original dispute that sparked the war amongst the shiny ones, uh, known as the Ls, E-L-S, happened in Edinburgh, for that part of Scotland was once part of the Thule of Atlantis, when Atlantis expanded southward into the British Isles and into uh, the Northern Irish Isles. The author, Common Beaumont, described the real significance in his 1946 book, uh, Britain is a Key to World History. The rights to which are now owned by the CIA, all copies have been removed in 1947 and are uh, an international esoteric temple called the Star Temple. Guess why? What is on the cards is probably that Scotland will again revert to being an ancient priest kingdom and Edinburgh will again revert to being a holy city in this new world order concept. The prophecies of the Brer Seer as Rome was London is and Edinburgh shall be and that of what Nostradamus of the political frost that existed between the Windsor dynasties and Scotland, the United States and UK agreement that the King of Terror um, and that's uh, in stanza 66 to 68, also predict the return of the elves, the angels of God, which, by the way, many, many people are seeing in and around Scotland. NASA is filming them. The great perils of great, the pearls of great price and the shining angels of stars being of the Magi. These stars or angels are interdimensional beings and witnesses and abductees alike that note that they have appeared in Edinburgh and elsewhere in Scotland uh, several times and also very up and close. The witnesses say that the angels of God return to pass judgment on the earth and its various human and non-human races. Also, uh, let me give you an example, uh, breaking from uh, script, uh, is that in dialogue that um, David, uh, do you know, I'm sorry, Jeff, do you know, uh, what or Jesse? Do you know what the Hebrew translation of the the word NASA is? Either of you? I do not know that one. All right. In Hebrew, it translates into deceive or deceit thereof. So that gives you an idea who's running the world. Okay. So just, just before because we continue, it, so uh, uh, obviously this is this is uh, shaking some foundations and. Uh, as I Absolutely. as I've always given in my preludes in our conversations before Chris, I'm not going to uh, turn any of these conversations into a debate with you. Uh, for instance, uh, you know, because Jesse and I have a platform where we speak our truths uh, quite mm -hmm. often, and uh, I don't want to turn this into a debate. But it, I, I will say a lot of the facts are very very compelling, the Seven Hills and things like that. So I, I would just have one question for you and then and there there's a couple people who want to uh to call in if you don't mind uh and i'll, I'll invite jesse to make a comment as well mm -hmm. but in your mind uh chris with why would they pull off such a deception was it about hiding the ark of the covenant it's a combination it's a multitude basically from my analysis and research that I know that the Romans attacked, which were mainland uh, uh, Great Britain, attacked the Scottish. And what I may or may not have mentioned before is that Scotland is the home of the, the original home of the Israelite slash uh, Hebrew race, okay? And so I am of Scottish and British descent, both parents. I have one, one of Scottish on my father's side, father, and uh, British on my uh, father's mother's side, and just to reverse on my mother's side, uh, the father was uh, British, and uh, her father was British, and, and her, her mother was uh, Scottish. And one of them is what is known as the royal bloodlines, but I've never traced it, and that is Russell, R-U-S-S-E-L-L. -S -S -E anyway, going forward with the, the answer is that the Romans in British history, which has always been falsified, stated that they attacked Scotland twice, okay? Uh, we know them uh, in ancient times. They go anywhere back to the Picts, and basically um, 
they lost twice. And you have two walls. You have the Hadrian Wall and a second wall. And they divided what is known as basically Scotland and Great Britain. And uh, my point is that they actually, by in Irish uh, ancient history, they recorded the true history. And that is uh, recorded by uh, one of the, I consider the top leading alternative historian in the world today. Uh, his name is um, Michael Sarian, and the, the T is silent. He's originally Irish, but lives in Seattle, Washington, and he tours and lectures uh, nationwide. And I've read massive amounts of his work, and it's absolutely in, in, uh, uncomparable. But uh, he stated that uh, the British history, would, he growing up in Ireland, he did massive research into ancient historical tomes uh, in cathedrals, monasteries, uh, uh, churches, uh, libraries, private collections, and he found the truths of life. And the point being is that the Irish history stated that there, the Romans actually attacked three times and then decided since they couldn't defeat the Scottish, which were the original, as mentioned, uh, Israelites and Hebrews, they moved their uh, kingdoms into the Mediterranean. And that, uh, when I mentioned Professor Alan Wilson, I'll send you his, uh, um, his 50 minute video will convince anyone in this world that all of history has been completely written and controlled by Great Britain. With so unquestionably. Please send me that video and uh, I will post it. I, I give you my comments. I will post I hope, it. Send hope, it right after the show and I'll post it. I, hope, I will do that. I hope that you can actually play it like on a Saturday or something when there's just, where you can just put it out to the public, let them know that they're going to be able to watch it without having to download it. Okay. Whatever. Okay. That will do. So I think that, uh, it's a, it's a multitude that they, they could not defeat the Scottish number one. Uh, secondly, uh, rather than, rather than trying to constantly lose thousands and thousands of troops, uh, in the process that basically it was just easier to relocate and rewrite history because History is always written by the victor and never the defeated. They have controlled history, and this goes all the way back. Uh, all history today is founded upon uh, Great Britain, and prior to that, uh, it's founded on uh, the uh, Roman and then the Greek. I have studied them in both all, all of them and Egyptian extensively, and this is a matter of fact. It's unquestionable. So it was a way of being able to uh, still... Uh, retain a kingdom and be able to, in our, in their society, which is progressed into ours, we are in this debt-based society. We are founded upon what is known as a precious metal society and a precious gem and that everything is for sale and for resale. And this is what has been in, entrenched and ingrained into the public's mind for countless centuries and millennia.